that is the lovely view that I have right now from my hotel room in Lindau, Germany. I'm unfortunately quarantined and can't be on site, but we are coming to you live from the 71st annual Lindau Nobel Laureate meeting in Lindau, Germany, where 600 young scientists are mingling with about 30 Nobel laureates for a week of mentorship. And I'm speaking to one of the young scientists right now. Joining me is Nicole Foster from Flinders University in Australia. Hi, Nicole, can you hear me? Yep, yep I can I hear you fine. fine. We finally have a great signal. You look great. Me too. <laughs> and you're standing outside the Inselhalle, which is the main lecture hall. Of course, some of the events this week are taking place in other venues on the small island, but there's a lake behind you, and what we don't see is the Inselhalle behind you, our, our camera person uh, who's helping us out. So I understand this year, you know, the meetings here in Lindau um, – reflect the science Nobel Prizes. So there will be a physics meeting one year and a medicine physiology meeting and a chemistry meeting. This year is a chemistry meeting, but I understand that two years ago, you were supposed to be here for a medicine physiology meeting, uh, but unfortunately it was virtual, but you were given the chance to attend this year, but you're not actually a chemist, right? Tell me what you do. Yeah, yeah, so, so it, was it was actually the interdisciplinary meeting, meeting, so it combined, combined all different, different disciplines. disciplines. So, so um, that, that was probably more fitting, fitting. so I'm so technically not a chemist, chemist but um, I, I work with environmental DNA, DNA so, so I'm more of an environmental scientist. scientist. Um, and basically, basically the focus of my work is to take uh, sediment, sediment pores from, from the um, coastal coast wetlands, and then using environmental DNA, we actually reach coastal environments, so our our soil cores went about 3,000 years old, and so we were able to see what our environment looked like thousands of years ago to now as a way to sort of document change in the um, environment and inform how we restore these these habitats. So I also did a bit of a, a isotope analysis and the carbon dating, so that's why I sort of fit into the, the chemistry category. Excellent. So... Uh you are finding some common ground here, but is it interesting to be at a meeting where it's so interdisciplinary and all these sessions and all these people that you are meeting are so outside your field? What is that like for you? Yeah, I mean, I had no expectations coming here. I thought that I wouldn't really meet anyone that was near to my field, but I've actually already formed a collaboration. So that's been really kind of exciting. Um, and I've been like, it's just really nice to learn new science and see what people are doing and what people are passionate about, you know, especially the young scientists. It's just been like opened up a whole new world for me of, of chemistry. And That's so great to it's hear. It's really exciting. There's so much focus on the Nobel laureates, of course. It's called the Lindau Nobel Laureate Meeting, but, <laughs> but so much of it is about connecting with the other young scientists. Can you, without giving away all your secrets, tell me something about what do you mean you were able to collaborate uh, with someone who's outside your field? Yeah, so I met a girl that was doing, um, she was looking at uh, perfumes in plants and like looking at the volatile chemicals and the sort of um, scent chemicals. And she wanted to look at ancient plants. And I guess like my work is looking at ancient plants in soils, but we also can do it with specimens that are unaccessible, obviously extinct plants. So. Um, I think for her, like I can get the DNA out and the, the data and she can then go on and, and use that. And so that was kind of exciting because I never thought that there would be anyone working um, anywhere near what I was doing. So That's excellent. So tell me about you and your science. Did you always know that you wanted to be a scientist? Uh, no, I think initially I wanted to be a journalist. I liked writing. Um, and then I sort of, even when I went to university, I wasn't really sure. I did very broad science. Um, I sort of knew I wanted to study and I liked learning, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I like being out in the environment. I love going for hikes and walks. And eventually I got to the point where I realized that we are destroying a lot of it. And I wanted to then do work that I was proud of and something that would help this environment and, and keep it going for, for the next generation. So it wasn't always a thing that I was passionate about, but I've sort of grown into it um, as I've gotten older. And, and how did you find your way to this field of science? And anything you can tell me about your story and why you like what you're doing? Yeah, so um, I, I kind of really had a, a like passion for plants, but I really hated insects. Um, so I didn't <laughs> want to do any land plants. 
And so I realized there's a lot of underwater marine plants. And so I realized like that's probably my calling and where I need to go. <laughs> and then it just sort of developed. There were different opportunities that I just put my hand up for. I, I didn't try to stick to too strict a plan. I tried to just take everything that I could and, and the environmental DNA field sort of found me and I started really enjoying it and getting into it. And like, here I am, I guess. So. That's wonderful. And you know, you said something really interesting a moment ago uh, because the Nobel Prizes, of course, are not just for cool science discoveries. They have to be for the betterment, uh, for the benefit of mankind. And you find, I just find that, of course, scientists are nerdy and just love the weird science things for their own sake. But over and over, I find not just the laureates, but the young scientists have these other motivations. And I, I want you to elaborate on that because you touched on it. But besides, you know, like what gets you up every day to do the kind of work you do? Um, in, a, you, in addition to finding the science cool, you suggested that you had some other motivation there. Yeah, I think like, especially in the environmental field, it is actually hard to get motivation because the outlook can be a bit depressing and the things that are yeah. going on in the world right now, the climate change scenario is not the best. But I think for me, like um, getting to work with plants and being in the ocean environment and the amount of joy that I get from that gets me up in the morning. And also like, you know, events like this where I meet young people that are just as passionate and then I'm like, well, if they're doing it, like I can do it. So when I sort of get a bit, you know, down on things, I sort of remember that there are other people working and I shouldn't leave them alone to solve the problems. I should also try to help. So, um, yeah, I think for me, it's just a real passion for being outdoors and being in the environment and just wanting to make sure that we, we keep that and it doesn't get destroyed. That's great. So uh, we're pretty far into the meeting now. Today is <laughs> Thursday already and we really only have one more exciting day tomorrow. Tell me yeah. about some more of the highlights. Uh, um, there's all sorts of different types of sessions from lectures to open exchanges that are very two way. Uh, tell me yeah. about some of your, your highlights. Uh, it's really hard to say. I, I have enjoyed it so much. And I, I want to say all my highlights have been meeting the Nobel Prize winners and definitely hearing their experiences and their advice, especially like the women that have won Nobel Prizes has been super inspiring for me. But majority it's been talking to young scientists and I've been able to meet with people from South Africa, from Greece, from all around the world, and especially like young women that are very, you know, proud and are doing really great work. It's just that part for me has just been incredible and something that I'll really take away. Um, so I like, I like to say, yes, that the Nobel laureates are amazing, but I think also the young scientists here are, are equally amazing. Absolutely. And is, is the topic of being a woman in science an important issue to you or...? Yeah, definitely. I've done some work in um, like a school, an all-girls school, to sort of um, stimulate that sort of passion and realise the different uh, careers that you can do in science. And yeah, it's something that I would like to um, sort of emulate in my career and, and encourage more women to pursue science, but also support the peers that I already have. I've, I've heard of lots of struggles and different things. And yeah, I think that's something that I can uh, contribute to. So it's something that, yeah, I'm passionate about. And I'm not a scientist myself, but I do participate in a lot of science outreach. Have you done much science outreach? And do you think it's important for the public to be more, you know, better informed about science? Yeah, I do a little bit. So I do run a blog and of course, working in the school with science outreach. I'd like to do a lot more. So I'm starting an NGO with some friends to help raise better awareness about coastal wetlands and also to get more support for women and, um, uh, minority background researchers. But yeah, I think the communication and especially what we've seen through COVID needs to be a lot better. And I want people to feel like they're also invested in our environment. So by informing them and getting them used to and understanding what, how amazing everything is, like what I, that's what I think, then I think that people will be more invested in, in maintaining it and looking after the environment. So I think it's so important. And to make sure it's also like, like attainable, we're not too, not using too big a language or trying to explain too much, just trying to get people interested in their own time. Yeah. Um, these have been weird times uh, through the pandemic now, two and a half years on. Um, you've been in Australia for the pandemic, which I think has been quite different from my experience in the United States. Is there, tell me what, 
I'm almost curious, like the meeting and the science aside, but how did it impact your ability to work? But also maybe a little more generally, um, you were able to treat, uh, not you personally, but treat Australia like an island and, and really yeah. isolate way better than we were able to. Do you have anything to say about the, how's it been going and where is it two and a half years later? Yeah, and I think, you know, we always complain Australia is so far away from the rest of the world, but I think it was the first time we were like, yay, this is good. <laughs> um, you know, in the state that I was in, you know, the first part of 2020, we did have some lockdowns and then we went back to normal relatively. Um, you know, we had no masks, there was nothing in place because it wasn't within the state. And as soon as there was a case, we were straight onto it. Um, so I count myself really lucky to be, have been in that situation, been able to go see family and friends um you know two years on we're now sort of we've opened up everything's open but we're all vaccinated we actually have quite a high percentage of vaccination in australia which is coming to this meeting i'm extremely proud of <laughs> um and you know we've been very fortunate we've had access to a lot of the medicines and things that we need so um yeah i mean now it, it's becoming you know it's everywhere it's all through australia everyone's getting it but at least you know we're vaccinated and we've got the best chance we have to to fight it off so yeah, I felt like it was very, uh, I was very lucky in the situation. So. Yes, and I'm fully vaccinated with four. I'm old enough that I've had my second booster fully vaccinated. <laughs> and yet, um, and, and the meeting, I'm, I'm very happy to see that they're, uh, they've implemented pretty strict protocols and everybody has to be tested before they go into the Insohala every day. Um, yes. And because of that, I, the day before the meeting, uh, I've been, ex it, it prevented me from participating on site. Let's come back to the meeting um, in terms of, there's been a lot of interesting issues like trust in science and um, any other issues that you saw in sessions like that that have been running through the meeting that are particularly interesting to you? Yeah, I think the trust in science and it's been interesting because obviously the COVID topic comes up a lot and it's good to get everyone's perspectives, um, especially Nobel laureates and, and realising that not everyone even agrees um, within, you know, the, the higher end of our science. These are all people that are like at the highest level you can be and still they're not, you know, really sure. So it's it's been, yeah, very interesting to sort of see um, the different, you know, views on it. Um, I think also like what I've noticed within the young scientists and I think also having uh, the women here is that, yeah, there is a lot of inclusiveness and trying to get diversity in science. So I think that's another theme that's been quite strong this year and that's been really good. But the, the trust in science topic, I think, is, is very important and it stimulated a lot of extra discussions about, you know, how is the right way to go about reaching the public? And I think, you know, we've tried so much. Um, we need to look at, you know, other options, like we need to make sure that these the people that we're talking to, we're doing it in a way that is relevant to them. Like, I get excited about certain things that I know other people aren't excited about. And so I know I can't just talk to them about that. I need to talk to them about what they like and, and find the, the common ground. So yeah. I think those discussions here are, are really good. That's great. Well, I'm going to let you go, but maybe uh, a final thought on, of course, you don't know years from now, looking back, the context, what this meeting will mean in your life or career, but what are you thinking now as uh, as you have one, almost two full days left with the meeting, um, how, what do you feel about how what you're gonna carry home with you from it? I think for me as well, being from a different field, I've realized how much science out is out there, how many cool things people are doing. And then I think it's gonna make me a more well-rounded scientist because I've sort of tried to learn a lot of different concepts outside my field. Um, obviously all the friendships I will take with me. And I think like, I just keep pinching myself that I'm actually here. So I think like it'll be a few weeks before I, I actually take in the full importance and how, how big this was, but it would definitely be something that I um, carry with me for the rest of my career, yeah. Well, thank you very much for taking thank time out of an intense <laughs> agenda to speak with me for a few minutes. And uh, once again, that was Nicole Foster, one of the 600 young scientists here at Lindau this year. I'm Brian Mallow, and uh, we'll be back with some more interviews. Here's another parting shot of the lovely view here, the lake, Lake Constance, and we'll be back.